Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get started in worship. Um, and for those of you who are watching live on Facebook, just to let you know, we actually have a YouTube channel, and we're streaming on that as well. Uh, it should be linked on our Facebook page, so if you want to like, if you want to do that. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, so if you want to watch on uh, YouTube, um, then you can you can do that. Um, so yeah, um, everybody, let's go ahead and stand and uh, get ready for worship.
praise this morning. It is well to be sold for us. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Welcome today. Glad that you are here in the service. We hope that you are being blessed of the Lord. And God has been good to you this past week. Well, it's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining, a little hazy still. We were talking previous to service starting. Uh, everybody got a free vacation yesterday and today. Uh, you are in the Sahara Desert. Welcome. <coughs> Glad you're able to be here. And uh, enjoy your time in Africa. Where did I go this summer? I went to the Sahara Desert in Africa for a couple days. Everybody will say, wow, that was cool. What'd you see there? All oh, just dust. <laughs> Just us, but it was a it was a good time. And uh, anyway, we're glad you're here. Good to see all of your faces. Good to see everybody on Facebook. And as it was announced earlier, we're now on YouTube, Round Mountain Community Church, our own channel. So subscribe to it. You do have to subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, doesn't cost you anything. You just got to put some info. And then get on YouTube and go in there and uh, look for Round Mountain and all the videos and all of our services will be live streaming there uh, from here in the sanctuary. So we've added that to our abilities to uh, reach people. So thank you so very much for being involved with that. And uh, we want to uh, just remind you, we're going to continue our worship services here at 1030 on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock Wednesday night, Facebook Live. We'll continue our devotional and prayer time that we're doing. Remember, pick up your wristband. If you don't have one yet, pick one up on your way out this morning. We are Mountain Strong. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. And if you want a t-shirt, see Sister Angie. She'd be glad to hook you up with a Round Mountain t-shirt. We have them with special blue light, green light, red light, yellow light special going on on that. There's also a list up there of all of our shut-ins, senior adults in our church are, are uh, our joy, our joy group. We'll call them our joy group. You know what a joy group is, don't you? Just older youth. <laughs> so our joy group at home that are not able to get out, so just uh, uh, send them a card. Jot a, just uh, jot a little note to them. Let them know that they are missed. That we love them. Uh, they're the ones that uh, probably are taking the, the brunt of this in this day and time. Not able to get out and about. Those that are in assisted living or nursing centers or rehab facilities, they're not in contact personally with people other than the workers in that place. And that's a challenging thing for them as well as their families. So uh, do remember them and pray for all of them and that. All right? So we appreciate you today being here and just say God bless you. We have an updated uh, prayer list outside if you'd like to get one for your family. Uh, and take home with you. Uh, let's pray for let's pray for a cure, a vaccine, and the total doing away of this. I, I'm tired of this COVID. I'm just fed up with it. it. It it's taken our lives away from us. And let's just pray. God, you do a work, manifest it quickly. He's not going to be impressed with the government and all of that. He can accelerate it and do what needs to be done. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen? Faith healed people. I believe God's capable. So let's pray. If God can say, part the Red Sea, walk on dry ground, surely he can part the Red Sea of this COVID-19 and find a cure and use human hands to do it. Because everything that God does, humans have been involved in it throughout the scriptures. He's done it for the benefit of 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 the created thing, the one, the most, the most prized creation he ever created was you and I. And he does what he does for us. <clears throat> so let's believe with that. Also pray for Brenda Wood. She, uh, she had a little accident this last week, last Sunday, and she's in a cast now. She's excited about that, I'm sure. And uh, Ronnie's probably to blame. And uh, he probably buried the run of it and all that. But pray for Brenda. She's recovering from a broken arm. God will just minister to her. Uh, got a, got uh, contacted with, from Kristen Hamilton this week that uh, her and James and their family, their, their parents, both, uh, she, they both received information and had incidents in their families with their parents in recent weeks. Uh, his dad uh, had a stroke. Her dad, his dad had a stroke 
and dealing with recovering from that. Her dad had heart issues just in the last few days, so pray for him. And she just found out that her mom has a brain tumor. And so let's pray for Kristen and James as they're dealing with their issues with their parents uh, during this time. And uh, so lift them up. Pray for Sister Alice. She's in, a, she's in the midst of a 14-day quarantine after her hospital stay. Uh, there at her rehab center, her facility that she's living in. So pray for her. Praise report, Virgil and Treva Wood got uh, a good report. Uh, the COVID-19 is out of their system and they are free from it. So we want to praise the Lord for that. Keep praying for Brian Gulley to God to minister to him. Tom Davenport continued healing in his recovery from his hip replacement surgery. Uh, keep praying for Loretta and DeMont and her family and her brother in Kansas. God will continue. Uh, my friend Wesley, he had uh, uh, surgery some months ago, uh, had a kidney taken out and developed uh, a hernia in that area. So he had surgery there uh, again this week. So pray for him. Uh, on top of that, you know, we prayed with him and been there since he lost his wife, Cheryl. Pray with him. It's just... Uh, Seem like compounding itself on top of each other for him and his family. So continue to pray for, for Wesley over in Harrison. I appreciate it so very much. Uh, Since then, you received a text from Robert Leanne. Robert met with the surgeon meetings Tuesday. Uh, he is taking a turn. He's lost 15 pounds in the last month. Uh, they're out in Colorado again, and the doctor's out there. So having consultation with surgeons on Tuesday of this coming week out there facing surgery and trying to figure out what they can do. So pray for them. Would you stand with us this morning? How, how many this morning have a need you'd like for us to pray with you about as we stand together? Anybody? Anybody have a need? You want to speak it out? Please do so. Remember, Granny, she tripped over a cat last night. So oh, goodness. Bless her. Pray for her. Anyone else? Pray for Carol. God will touch the ministry. Help his mom. Anyone else? Just ask that uh, the Lord would be with the university administration because they've gone. I've received a ton of emails going back and forth on what they're going to do for the fall semester. That they would just have the wisdom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And for, for all the school system, I go back to work in a new office setting, temporary office setting. We don't have our old office. But I go back on Wednesday, so uh, we're having to do all the protocols that are there, plus try to set up a brand new office temporarily till mid-fall when we get our new facility built. Uh, so pray for me as I go back to work, kind of. I won't be sharing an office in proximity to somebody like I did in my previous building, but still just, you know, man, I've been on vacation. No, I haven't. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of work around the place, so. Uh, remember me as we go back to work. Any of the others in Fayetteville, Fayetteville is releasing and all the workers are going back uh, into their offices with social distancing and all that. Teachers are having to schedule their coming and going out of the buildings in Fayetteville. And so, likewise, pray for all the administrations there. Any other requests? as she goes to Aller just so they can find out what's going on. Anyone else? All right, let's pray together. Father, we want to lift up the needs in this house and across the airwave this morning. God, we ask, ask them that in the name of Jesus, you'll minister to every need in every situation. Those, God, that are battling uh, with their bodies recovering and renewing from surgeries that they've been through or situations that they've faced, I pray in the name of Jesus, your glory and your power would demonstrate itself in behalf of each one of those needs. I pray that, God, you would just reach down and let recovery and healing come to those that are battling and facing situations. Of, God, we pray that your power would demonstrate itself in the recovery process. Those have been through surgery. Those are recovering from broken 
homes. I pray that God you be with them. I pray that God those that are going through transitions in the workplace. Uh, God, I ask that the healing power would just manifest. Uh, I pray that God you will shield and shelter your people from the from uh, that are part of our church family. Build a shield of protection around us. Uh, shield us from uh, uh, the COVID-19 and this coronavirus that's going around. God, and I believe that you're able to bring the numbers down. You're well in control. And this has not caught you off guard. And you're not overwhelmed by it. And I pray in the name of Jesus you would do a miraculous work. I pray in the name of Jesus let your glory, your power, and your spirit demonstrate itself. Father, my spirit was stirred and I heard a man, a politician this week, said there are no miracles coming. God, I believe that miracles can come and that you can create the miracle. Not only in this country and our region, but around the world and wipe this thing from the face of the earth. Let this come, that has come against us, God, a solution be found, a virus, God, to, to turn it around and take it from among us. God, we just thank you because in the Old Testament, as, as the plague was coming against your people, God said the, to the man of God, lift up the, lift up the serpent, lift up the, the, the staff, and my glory and my power and my healing will come. And God will lift up the staff of your presence and the staff of your power. And you've done miracles in the past, and we're believing that you can do a miracle again. And we ask that in the name of Jesus, you do that in behalf of your people and behalf of this world that we live in today. We give you praise and we give you the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We bless you today and we praise you, Almighty God. Amen, amen. Turn around to somebody, give them an air high five and say, I'm glad to see you today. Amen. Miss Alice is going to sing for you.
Thank you, Mr. Colton. Or Mr. Colton. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Kinda. She is Mrs. Colton. Right? Right. Right. She does a good job. She always does a wonderful job. Thank you. Ask Mrs. Nicole to come and she's going to share with our children's ministry department this morning. some new signage and, and uh, new logos printed up and, and uh, just kind of uh, get updated. How many every now and then you get it updated? I don't know if I shared this with you last week. I apologize, but Miss Sister Center shared with me the last time I talked to her on the phone about, she says, well, I don't know if you want to see me right now. I said, I haven't had my hair done and it's just sticking everywhere. <laughs> She tickled me when she said that. So some of us have got to get redone every now and you know, get our hair redone. And, uh, and uh, so uh, anyway, appreciate uh, Claudia doing that, and it's uh, just a kind of a fresh look. Have your Bibles this morning. Turn with us to the book of Acts once again. I'm going to be talking about and preaching about the power of the church one more time this morning. And, uh, you know, I, I, I never get tired of preaching about 
the power of God's church and the ability of God's church and what he can do uh, to those that will let him flow through them. Amen. Acts chapter 1, uh, verse number 4. We're going to begin reading at. The scriptures read this way. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but you should be, be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons for which the Father has put it in his own authority, but you shall receive, and this was the emphasis of what he wanted them to hear, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Father, today we ask that you take your word, bless it, anoint it. God, it was anointed and you... You formed and fashioned the words as they were recorded in the hearts and the minds of those that offered them and wrote them. And I pray that today you will take that anointing and double it down and allow your word to go forth today with demonstration. I pray it will stir every spirit, it will stir every heart uh, that is in this building and those that are watching uh, on Facebook uh, or YouTube or wherever they may be watching. I pray that God, your Holy Spirit, would minister to their lives. And let them feel the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and let the power of it uh, rise up inside them. And we give you the praise uh, and we give you the thanks. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. The power of the church. We've talked about in the previous portions of this message in this series uh, about the power of the church. Do we have it? within the church today, with the framework of the church? Or have we become so socially uh, acute, attuned to what's going on that we'd rather deal with social issues than the spiritual issues? And I would have to dare say that there are many churches that are more socially driven by the agendas of the life around them than they are by the spirit of and the power of God. There's less anointing and more acquisitions of, of social agendas. I believe that we need to be a church in this hour like never before that has an answer that's filled with the presence and the power of God Almighty. Jesus said for his early church membership, he said, you wait for the promise of the Spirit and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when that day comes, you shall receive power after which it has come upon you to be witnesses. We this day need to realize that we are part of a spirit Field body of believers. Uh, we are not just a church on the corner or curve of a road in the country. Uh, we are part of the redeemed. Uh, we are part of the sanctified. Uh, we are part of those uh, that need to walk in the fear and the admiration of God. Uh, we need to walk under the anointing uh, and the power of God in our lives. Uh, we are not just people. Uh, we are people that have been called out from among them. We are separated people. We are people of, a, of, of anointing. We are people that have a purpose and a plan. God has a plan for us. <laughs> the characteristics of the early church. As we begin preaching this series. Uh, number one, we share with you that they had a heart felt devotion, fully devoted to the cause of the kingdom. Uh, secondly, we talked about last week uh, that there was a strong unity uh, among the believers. Uh, I want to jump into my third point uh, of this message and third part of this message today. Uh, and I want to declare to you that the power came to the church uh, for the purpose of being witnesses uh, and having the manifestation of the power of God in their lives. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says you receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses uh, uh, to me in Jerusalem, uh, in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Uh, this scripture tells us the main reason for the power of God coming into our life uh, is to tell others uh, of what Jesus is doing. Yes, I, mean. yes. I want to ask a very pointed question this morning. Uh, 
as I begin this message, uh, what has Jesus done in your life uh, that you got to tell somebody about? Let that sink for what have you had Jesus do in your life? You say, well, I just do my normal thing. Are you breathing? <laughs> Are you living in a home or a house, whether owned or rented? Yeah. Do you drive an automobile or you have transportation available to you? Do you have food in your pantry or your cabinets? Do you have all of those things? Do you have a running water? inside. Amen. We, we sometimes don't pause long enough to thank God for some of those things uh, that we started taking for granted in our lives. Uh, if the dishwasher goes out, we, we will stop life. Pause. We can't have a house without a dishwasher. Guess what I, I was, was a dishwasher when I was growing up? Me and my sister. We didn't have dishwashers, and when we got one in our house, we thought we had struck gold. We thought we had done become the hillbillies and moved to, to California and we, to Beverly Hills. We thought we had made it. All we needed was a concrete pond in the backyard, and we'd have been there. But then it became the chore and how it quickly it changes. It became a fight, a chore, an argument. Who had to put the dishes in the dishwasher? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We've come a long ways. And sometimes in our walk with God, we get so blessed. We get so many things. His presence and His power moves in our life. And we believed Him to bring us through. We believed Him to do great things in our life when we were young. In our walk with Him. Or, or first saved. Or maybe when we were young with energy and vitality and, and strength in us. Uh, that, that we once had. How many can identify the fact that as you get older, you don't have the energy to go as long. You're not the ever ready bunny anymore. Yeah. I learned that this week, the last two weeks. These last two weeks, we decided to do something. One of those projects I did, decided while I wasn't in the workplace, I was checking my computer and doing all I could, but I didn't have any buses running. I didn't have any drivers to holler on the radio at. Uh, tell them they needed to go and pick up this kid they missed or, or do any of that. So I didn't have uh, my routine job, but I was still on the pace roll and doing all those things, so I did what I had to do. Anyway, and I missed the thing. So those last two weeks, we decided, we decided when we first moved in, we were going to expand our deck eventually, make it a little larger. And then we decided, and, and we were in agreement that we were going to do this. The we got dropped. <laughs> Somewhere along the course of this, we decided we're going to do this. And it became I did this. But the last two weeks, I have poured concrete underneath our deck. Now, mind you, I've got, we got a deck that's eight foot wide, and it's up about yay high off the ground. I can get in there, you know, and I can move around. I can put stuff up in there, and it's in the dry. I still put a lot of stuff up there, uh, push lawn mowers and lumber and things of that nature. It's up underneath that, and it's dry. The roof comes over and covers that part of our deck, and it's nice. Uh, but we want a concrete. I want to pay a pumper truck to come out and pump concrete up over top of my house and pour it in there. So I had one of them nice two-wheeled wheelbarrows, big dudes. And I dropped three cats bags of concrete at a time down in that thing and took a hole all last week. I poured and dumped out 98 bags of 80 pound concrete last week. There ain't part of my body that's telling me you're too old to do this. <laughs> I did that last week. Well this week I added and set <clears throat> by myself, dug I, I, I said, okay, old man, you ain't going to do it because there's more power available than what you used to have. So go out and rent you an auger 
and drill you some holes to put your post in. So I went and rented an auger from United Rental and gave them a little bit of PR there. Rented an auger with a 12 inch bit because I put six by six posts in the ground, two foot deep. Oh, that was easy work. Because all I had to do was lean on that thing and push it in the ground, shovel it out, and clean out the residue in the bottom of the hole, and everything would go. But then I had to put the six by six posts. I guess how tall them were, them dudes were, or long they were. They, was, they weren't just easy posts, they were 16 foot long. They filled the back of my trailer up real well. <laughs> Slid them out, took the end of that trailer, picked them up. Got to get centered. I took them over and put one in up on a sawhorse. I'm a one-man construction crew. <laughs> put them up on a sawhorse, got back at the other end of that thing, lifted it up. I went ahead and screwed in my supports, two by four supports on two sides of that dude and went to pick it up, lifted it, slid it off that into the hole. Got it far enough in there, I was able to kick them legs down and keep it from wallowing, and then set states uh, and got ready to level it up, plumb it. I got five of them plumbed all by myself. One of them decided he didn't like the way he was going in, so he decided he was going to come out, so he come out and would come down across my nice wheelbarrow. And I got a handle on it, kind of got a bone in it down. <laughs> got a crack in the bottom of the plastic bottom of that wheelbarrow. But I did that. I got them post sets, concrete set around them, set up for a day, and the next two days then I spent pouring concrete before I had to get up underneath there in the wheelbarrow. See that first week, last week, I was dumping my wheelbarrow sideways or taking a shovel and pushing the concrete. This old man's worked. And so this week I said, I ain't putting in the framework of that new addition on that deck until I, I can maybe wheel that wheelbarrow right into the middle of that thing and pour it and I didn't have to worry about it. So I got all that done, got it all done. Now I'm ready to frame it up. We're gonna have us a bigger deck, aren't we? Gonna be nice. Huh. Our grandkids will have a place to play even more outside than what they have now. But I learned I don't have all the power that I used to have. Amen? I don't have the energy that I used to have. Now my body, my mind still tells me I can, and my mind still says I can. And Angie said, I'm tired. Every night she kept, are you tired? I'm laying on the recliner. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm alive. I'm really good at that. <laughs> I don't have the power. And I realize as we get older in our walk with God, and we get older in this walk on earth, that we don't have what we used to have. But I'm talking about a power on the inside that changes us. I go back to when I first moved to Arkansas. My dad was pastor of church in Sheridan, Arkansas. There was a little lady called Sister Maudie. Miss Sister Maudie didn't have any education. She couldn't read a book. Uh, she, she didn't know how to read the Bible. But somebody had bought her an entire set of the Bible on an LP. And she would learn and listen to that Bible hours on all hours. And there wasn't a testimony service that didn't go by. The sister body didn't stand up from her third or fourth row seat that she sat in every service and stand up and begin to talk about the blessings of God in her life. And she began to talk about the Word of God. And then she began to quote the Word of God simply from having it read to her off of a long play album years ago. And there was something about her that just made you shut up and listen. What was it? It was called the anointing yeah. of the Holy Ghost. She had received an endowment with power. There were some people in our lives that we have had impact us in our lives. Yeah. I think of some of the saints that have been a part of Round Mountain. Sister Edith McCauley, she had something inside her that every now and then uh, she would let it out. Yes. Uh -huh. And you knew the anointing was about to happen uh, when she was sitting about a third of the way back or so, usually on that side over there, if I remember right, in our older building, and the Holy Spirit began moving, and God's presence was in the building, 
God. And you can hear her start warming up. Before you knew it, there was a Some folks look around like, oh, what's happening? Where's the snake? Now that's the anointing of God in somebody's life. Yes. <coughs> Sister Burnish would. Holy Ghost would rise up inside her. And all of a sudden, there would be a word of God begin to come forth. A message in tongues and interpretation of tongues. She walked in the power. She was one of them ladies. Uh, uh, her and Sister Edith were one. Some of those people, you know, that you 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 either was afraid of them totally because you knew they walked somewhere you didn't walk. Ever been in one of those church services where somebody, the preacher, was walking where angels only walked and they had an anointing on them and they begin reading the mail of folk in the congregation. Sorry, little church. And, and we, 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 we walk in, they were walking in the anointing and folk went with I've seen it happen. Folk wouldn't come back after the first service because they were afraid God was going to speak a word to them and reveal some stuff going on in their life. I'm talking about we need a dispensation and a generation yeah. that knows the power of God one more time that will manifest and show the power of God in their lives. Yes, amen. You should receive power. We are commanded to go and to tell the world about Jesus. And has Jesus done anything in us that we got worth telling? Mark 16 and 15 says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's not a person that's not worth saving. There's not a person that's not worth telling about the love of Jesus and the power of the cross in somebody's life. In Acts chapter 4, verse 33, it says, And with great power the apostles gave witness of to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus uh, and great grace was upon them uh, and with great power was upon their lives. May I tell you and instruct you and encourage you and admonish you this morning. Uh, we are the church uh, of a living God that has power and has majesty. It has strength. Uh, yes, it has mercy. It has grace. Uh, and may I shock somebody some uh, right now and say one day God will be the ultimate judge and judge us according to how we've lived for him. Yes, yes, he will. Not how good we've been in all of our social agendas and how well we've reached our human man. It's about telling about the gospel and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ to pull them out of the fire. Yes. What the scripture says, having compassion, pulling them out of the flame. That should be our sole purpose, not to help somebody in their need and their crisis, we do. But our greatest thing is having compassion, pulling them out of the flame. What is a flame? That is the burning pit of hell. Pulling them out and giving them hope in Jesus Christ. You see, the church, need to, we need to understand that the church was born and birthed and put in place to be one that had great power. It operated in a very powerful way. It had great fervency of the spirit. It had great passion of the mind. It had uncommon zeal. Yes. <coughs> we have lost a lot of the power, the zeal, the enthusiasm, the excitement that we once had in the church. Glory, glory. Now, I'm not calling for emotionalism. I'm calling about something that gets a hold of you on the inside and sometimes it comes out and people misinterpret it for emotions, but it's really the Spirit of God manifesting itself. The title of this, this section and this, this point of this message today, yes, is the power of God, the, ch the power of the church, uh, but today's message is entitled, this, this segment of it is the purpose of witnessing and the manifestation of the power of God. We don't have the manifestation or we don't really allow the manifestation of the power of God. And we're, going to, we're going to be limited in what we can do. But I'm a firm believer in anointing the sick with oil and praying the prayer of faith and calling for the elders. In other words, having a prayer line. I firmly believe in that. 
And we may be limited, and we're going to we're going to honor that, and we're not going to have prayer life just start lathering everybody up and spitting all over everybody. But we can still pray a powerful prayer, and we can believe God to manifest His working miracle, working power in the name of Jesus, yes. and declare that healing is going to come, miracles are going to be placed within somebody's life. You see, the early church had the great ability to produce an desired, intended result for the souls of men. They had such a power inside them that all they had to do is walk out and begin speaking and conviction fail upon the hearts and lives. Anymore now, if somebody walks in the anointing and something pricks somebody's heart, well, you just don't understand who I am. How dare you talk about me that way? I'm going to tell you, somebody arises up against you and says, you can't talk to me that way. You don't know me. It's probably called Holy Ghost Conviction. Uh -huh. <laughs> Holy Ghost Conviction. We need it again. That power needs to be so that we can witness the power of God. I'm going to share a story with you from the scriptures powerful story that tells us what the early church, how it walked, and how God honored the walk that they had. There's a difference between walking with God and walking in an honor walk with God. This story tells walking in that honored walk with God. Where when people came that had sin in their hearts and sin in their lives, and the Holy Spirit would reveal it, and they didn't want to come around, they didn't want to be, they didn't want to hear it. They were mean. I'm going to tell you something. If you pray for somebody to get saved, and the harder you pray for them, and the longer you pray for them, sometimes the meaner they get. You know why? Because they're combined the Holy Spirit conviction. Anybody got anybody that's been mean towards you and you've been praying for them? Guess what? The Holy Ghost is doing His work. So don't give up. Endure. I used to hear people say, endure to the bitter end. I want to tell you, it's not going to be a bitter end. It's going to be a better end. Amen? So don't let that bitter thing better. It's going to be better. So that honorary person that you're praying for may be getting honorier and meaner by the day and mean as a snake. Let God keep doing his work because that's exactly what's working. And they're running and they're fighting and they're listening to the demons in their minds and their spirits and they keep fighting the fight against God. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a in, there's an entity. There, there's strife between them. In Acts chapter 5, this beautiful story of God's power. You can't mess with God and get away with it. Is revealed to us. Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read 15, 16 verses, so hang on. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife. Now you know where I'm going if you've been in church. Sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds. And his wife, being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Peter said, Ananias, why is Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price for the land for yourself? I'm going to pause right there. How many times have we said, God, if you'll do this, we'll do that. We bargain with God. Right. And then we hold back on our part of the deal. The drowning man out in the water said, if you'll get me to shore, I'll serve you the rest of your day, rest of my days. And then he gets out of the water and never goes back to church. Never serves God. Never lives for God. We want to bargain with God. And here, here, this is what Ananias was doing. He had it in his mind. I'm going to sell a portion. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to give my life to God in totally, total surrender. But then I hang on to some hurts of my past. I had a bad relationship in, in my life when I was a kid my parents went through a divorce and it hurt me and wounded me and cut me and I just can't forgive my daddy or my mama for going through that whoever whatever we hang on to some things I'm just I'm, I'm just speaking from the Holy Spirit right now we hold on to little things past relationships past hurts past wounds 
And we can't get past that in current situations. And we're wondering why things don't seem to get better. Why we can't find total peace in our life. We have peace for a while. We have peace in a place. But we don't have total peace. Don't say that again. We have peace for a while. We have peace at, in a place. But we don't have total peace. Why? Because we're holding back part of what we said we're going to give God. Not a lot of amen right there. I'll tell you. We're holding back. Peter said, I, while it remained, it was not your own. While you had it, was it not yours? You could have made your mind up then. You could have chose to do whatever you wanted to do with it. But after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Evidently what he had done, he told the church, he says, I got this possession, I got this thing, I'm going to give it all to God. And when it come down to it, he said, no, I'm not. I shared a story not long ago, I had a free, I had, when we were first pastor, had a guy, a businessman, came to, came to us and said, hey, I want to do this and I want to do that. I had some illustrious ideas and plan, and, and uh, he wanted to do some things for the church. And I said, great, that'd be awesome. And... Uh, he wanted to buy something for the church, and so he said, let's go out here and look at it. took me out there, and he said, listen, I'd love to buy this and do this and bless the church with it. He said, but I noticed there's some things in the church that need to be done, and I'd like to take over this place, this position. I was going to have somebody else doing that. And they're doing a good job. They're doing the best that they can do. Well, I can make it better. I said, well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to ask this person to step down and ask you. I'm not... I'm not I was young and you didn't want to tell me what to do. Well, I didn't understand then. That was the Holy Spirit giving me some wisdom. And he had, he, had, he, had, he had lured us a little bit too by giving Andy a job and his business. <laughs> and after I told him, had that conversation, I said, I'm sorry, I can't make that change. I won't make that change. He withdrew his financial agreement to purchase an item for the church. Went along the way, Angela, he didn't need her. He didn't need her anymore, and she left the, her position with him in his business, and they quit coming to church. So the scripture talks about somebody seeing what God could do and the power of God could do, and that's another part, and I may bring it out in another message. People want to buy what God does. They want to purchase something from God. The man, the man saw the, the disciples do a miracle, said, I want to purchase this. What do I got to do to purchase this? You, you're further away from the truth that you could be. You can't purchase the power of God. You can't purchase the miraculous. Amen? So here we are with Ananias and Sapphira. Why have you lied? You lied to, not to man, but to God. Now Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon those who heard these things. Well, that's pretty dramatic, isn't it? He drew his last breath. And he lost his life because he lied to the Holy Spirit. I turned the page too quick. And the young men, <laughs> young men rose up and wrapped him, carried him away, and buried him. Now about three hours later, when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, she didn't know her husband had already died. Peter answered her, said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Yes, for so much. Peter said, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look the feet of those who have buried your husband now at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon the church and upon those who heard them. Wouldn't you, did you, don't you think that would happen around here? Or any church? Somebody lied to God and God said, all right, I'm going to show you who's in control. I'll tell you, that tells me that God can do anything at any time that he wants to. Amen. Miraculously, he can restore and bring life. Because what was Jesus did? He went every funeral he went to while he was here on earth that's recorded in the scripture. There was a resurrection. 
Jesus is not about death, but he's about life. Mm -hmm. And life more abundant. Mm -hmm. And he's come to give the church power and life. The church that has power is a church that will have life. And, the, and life uh, will produce other individuals. It will multiply itself. Life gives life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Life gives life. And you show me a church that is dying. And, and you show me a church that's diminishing. You show me, show me a church that has minimal results in whatever it does. I'll show you a church that has lost its, its connection to the power source of life. The heart of God has quit beating in their house. And they're more about anything and everything else other than the power of God. We need the power of God to manifest and show itself so that we can be witnesses of, of the things of God. And we'll tell you, we don't have to then, we won't have to advertise that there's something good going on. We won't have to advertise uh, that God is in this house. Uh, people will hear, people will know. You don't have to advertise if you're a Christian uh, because your life uh, and your light will shine and so forth of the things of God in your life. Fear came upon everyone. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And the believers were increasing, added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. And the multitudes gathered from surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were what? All, All healed. Yes. And the power that comes from the Holy Spirit, uh, that power that comes from the Holy Spirit gives us the same boldness that Peter experienced in preaching on the day of Pentecost, when we have a true indwelling and infilling and empowerment of God upon our lives, it'll give us boldness that we never thought that we could have. We'll walk into the midst of the most demonic-powered uh, uh, circle of influence, and in the name of Jesus, demons begin to flee every which door. They're, they're looking for windows to jump out and doors to run through. They'll make their own holes in the wall. They're going to get out of there because they can't stand the power of of Jesus Christ in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. We need that power that desperately stirs us to where we become a walking shadow of miracles. Amen. But we become so busy with all of the affairs and things of our lives. And I know we're talking in a I'm talking in a little segment right now. I'm preaching in a segment of our society and our time that things are a whole lot different than they were four months ago. But we're still the church. God's still God. Even with the pandemic all around us and the numbers increasing every day, we allow fear to just Manipulate us, control us, and, and, and I said it before, electricity, I respect it. I highly respect electricity. I don't totally fear it, but I respect it highly. I don't fear this pandemic, but I highly respect it. Because the last thing I want to do is have myself or anyone around me or anyone in our church become afflicted with it because we chose to come together. That's in your decision. Nobody mandates any of us to be here, right? We're here of our own free wills. And thank you for coming. If you choose to be here, if you choose to be at home, thank you for choosing to watch on Facebook. And thank you for being there. And, and God just has blessed us in this hour. In this day. He has tremendously blessed us. 
And, and I'm saying in the midst of all of that's going on, we can still be the church that has a powerful voice and a powerful response and a powerful manifestation of the Spirit within our lives to where somebody comes in contact with us and, and comes in proximity to us in our workplace or in our life or via the phone or whatever. We need to have a word of encouragement. And a word from the Lord yes. to touch and inspire. That same power that they walked in in the church is available for us today. There is a desperate need of the power of God to return within the body of Christ as never before. If we're not careful, we'll allow it to become, as it already has become in many places, a watered-down shale of what God's church is meant to be. Full of power, witnessing, and manifestation of miracles. Signs and wonders follow them that believe. Father, we want to thank you today. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And I pray that today, God, that the power of the Holy Spirit will rise up inside each one of us. Let us today make a conscious decision. To allow the Holy Spirit to become even more powerful in our lives. Share your power with us. Demonstrate yourself to us, we pray. Pour out your glory on us. Show us your spirit. God, if someone watching, someone in this building, may not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray today will be the day that they accept you and receive you as Lord. I pray that today, this day, will be a day of new beginnings for them in their life. I ask that Jesus will speak to our hearts. Let conviction, Holy Spirit, just go wherever people are. Minister to them, I pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, speak. Heads are bowed, eyes closed, whether here or whether you're at home. Do you need Jesus in your life? Is he the Lord of your life? Do you know him as Savior? I ask you today, if he's not, will you let today be the day of salvation? By whether an uplifted hand here in this worship center, whether you just lift your hand at home, God sees it. I don't have to see it. Say, I need Jesus in my life. Simply by an uplifted hand, I need Jesus and I want Jesus in my life. I wonder if you just lift your hand up. Mean that. Thank you, Lord, for anybody that raises their hand. Let today be their day of salvation. I want everybody in the building, everybody at home, you pray this prayer. Along with anybody that raised their hand, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me a new creature. Old things are passed away. And I become new. I'm your child. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise and honor in this house. Let's worship him together. Come on. Let's stand together.
you for this day, Lord. Your blessings upon our lives. Give you honor and glory. We close today. We're going to rejoice together over the blessings of God financially to our church. And uh, let's make our financial declaration and we're going to make a close with our prayer thanksgiving today. I want to thank you for continued giving, church. God bless you so very much. If you're still at home, you're paying that way. Post Office Box 262, uh, Elkins, Arkansas, 72727. And I say God bless you for your continued giving. Let's make this declaration together. We declare that through our tithes, offerings, and support of ministry, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs. Sales and commissions, interest and in income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, debts paid off, bills to decrease, houses and better houses, new and better cars. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. Thank you for those that give. Thank you for these that have come together, those that are watching our Facebook and YouTube. We pray, God, you'll bless them as they're watching there. I ask, God, that you'll minister to all the needs and all those that are sick, all those that are under the attack of the enemy one way or the other. God, encourage them and lift them up, we pray. God, send your angels to them and minister to them, we pray. Bless everyone in this house. Bless everyone the part of this church family. Bless them in their rising up and their laying down, their going out and their coming in. Bless them, God, in the city. Bless them in the country. Make them the head and not the tail. Cause everything that they do and everywhere that they go to be blessed and become theirs. I pray that you will prosper them in all things. Keep them safe from any harm or any injury. Let the hand of protection be upon them, we pray. Guide and direct them, we ask. And we give you the praise and all the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week, uh, Wednesday night. God bless you.